Not a matter of if, but when crisis will rock your world. I'm Rashini Rajkumar, crisis strategist, licensed attorney, and host of The Crisis Files. In each case file, we explore hot topics and meet inspirational people. Her mission is to spread joy, one bird at a time. And I'm really talking about birds, but we'll get to that. Heather Boschke is a strategic marketing leader turned children's book author and illustrator with thousands of book sales to her credit. You will hear her unique story of self-alignment and letting go in order to unlock different parts of who she is and let out more of herself. Heather is here for the case file I call Power of Play. Heather, you say you ultimately found your inner child. Yes. What does that mean? So drawing is something that I used to love as a kid. And up until middle school, it's how I played. I would go to my room and I remember just getting lost with my colored pencils and time would stand still. And I loved it so much. And then I got into high school and college and my first job and I just got away from it. So I hadn't drawn in nearly 30 years when after COVID lockdown, I heard a voice in my heart telling me I should draw again. And so when I bought a sketchbook and pens, I just sort of returned back to this part of me that I had let go. And I found all of that flow, all of that joy, and just returning back to this little girl who loved to draw. Yeah, and just so much fun. So you, I want to say, rediscovered drawing in 2021. You have since drawn 80 different birds. Each takes two to four hours to draw. And with those birds, that has led to the publication of three books. So let's meet the birds. You've given them names. They have personalities. Who are the ones in the books? Yes. And it all started with the drawing. So listening to my heart, drawing again. And after I would draw a bird, I would always name it. So we've got Clarence the Cardinal and Clara the Cardinal and Benny the Blue Jay and Gilda the Goldfinch. And without realizing it, I was creating these little characters because once you name something, you start to think, what is Clarence like and what is Gilda like? And then I started getting out in nature more and birding because I would look at pictures of birds so I could get the proportions right and get inspiration for my drawings. And as I learned more about birds and actually went birding more, I just had this idea that a children's book would be a beautiful collision of these playful illustrations and then all of these bird facts that I was learning. And so what I've done in the book, especially Little Birdie Buddies of Minnesota and Little Birdie Buddies of Wisconsin, is I introduce these little characters. And so there's facts about the birds, and then every bird has a sentence about their personality. So Clarence says, I'm kind and like helping others. And Clara says, I love to sing, and Winnie is bold and strong and likes to lead the way, and I encourage kids, or the reader, because it doesn't have to just be kids or kids of any age, I encourage them to find which bird is most like them so they could relate to a bird and then hopefully get excited about finding Winnie the woodpecker out in the wild. Winnie the woodpecker has been out in some of the trees in our yard, so we may have to have a conversation (laughs) eventually, but this is just so beautiful, and what I love that crisis filers can't see your face right now, but you just light up when you talk about these birds. So that is really the power of joy. And joy has become your mission. How has that been going? It's going so good. I mean, I have found joy to be the best GPS because for so long in my life, I feel like I had a goal, jobs I wanted, and I would just sort of be a speedboat aiming at my goal. And I now feel more like a sailboat. I'm going where the winds are taking me. I'm going where the momentum is. And instead of focusing so much on external things like promotions and titles, I now focus on what brings me joy, what gives me energy, and what makes me happy. And when I did that, it's like all of a sudden there was this breakthrough and all of the right people, places, opportunities have come into my orbit. And it has sent me on this journey that I've never expected. I didn't plan. However, all of the things are pointing me towards these are the doors I should keep opening. And so it's been effortless in a way. There is a flow that first half of my life I don't think I really had felt because I was sort of the difference of closed fist and forcing something and open palms and letting things flow. And that joy is just sort of the through line of all of that. So what kind of happens as we become adults and go into the workforce? It seems like we kind of become 
conditioned in ways that can be really negative and counterintuitive to joy. Yeah, I think whether it's conditioning, whether it's what we think we're supposed to do, because, you know, at some point, and maybe it's after middle school, you know, you try to be an adult. And you can see kids doing this. You know, oh, that's what babies do. And I'm not a baby anymore. I'm I'm a big kid. And we always want to get older and older and play that it was something that's just inherent of being a kid that gets replaced with responsibilities and other things. And I think before we realize it, we've buried that inner child, not necessarily intentionally, but at some point it's like, well, I don't have time for that. I don't have time to play. And so I think returning to that inner child is the key to unlocking so much joy. Yeah, absolutely. What has been sort of the reaction from children? Because I know you do book readings, you visit schools, all these different things. And I mean, I am a big fan of reading and a proponent of how it it unlocks so many worlds and it's the power to grow and get themselves to new places, bigger places. I love to hear about some of your favorite stories with them. It has been magical connecting with kids and helping them get excited about nature. Oftentimes when I do author visits in schools, depending on the age of the kid, we'll either do a little coloring activity or we'll do a drawing activity. And then afterwards, I usually get an envelope filled with all these bird thank yous and they're all the drawings that they've worked on. And so having them spark their joy and their magic, whether it's with drawing or coloring or They're so excited about one of the birds, and I've got friends that'll say, gosh, you know what? My little one, she just thinks she's Ruby the ruby-throated hummingbird, and every time we see a hummingbird now, she's excited because she knows what it is. And so whether it's the spark of joy or the spark of wonder or the spark of learning, there is a connection, and I think it's because I feel like it is that little me that's coming through when I'm drawing. Because when you see my drawings, they're not uber-realistic. They're cute and they're playful. They're very fun and playful. They're so fun. And usually they're very round, too. I like a round, you know, chubby bird. Yeah. I mean, I like that they are not starving birds. That is good. They are well fed. And so there is something about my little girl that is in my heart that's in all of our hearts. There's a little kid in each of us that's coming through and connecting with other littles. It's like that joy compounds in ways that just blow my mind because I have the best time creating these little things. But then when I get to share them and I see the reaction and then I get bird drawings from these kids, it's like a whole new level. I bet. I bet that it must just, your heart just leaps again with joy when you see these thank yous and these drawings that they're doing. So now 80 different birds (laughs) you've drawn and Are all of them in the books or not quite yet? Not quite yet. You know, it just really started out with drawing birds, random birds. People would say, oh, my favorite bird's a flamingo, so then I drew a flamingo. There was no real strategy until I had the idea for the book. And then the first book, most of the birds I had already drawn, and I just had a few that I wanted to round out because they were birds of Minnesota. So I wanted to make sure they were representative of your state. Yes, that's right. And then I did Wisconsin, and so there's some species crossover. And then when I wanted to do the baby bird book, I had to draw, because I hadn't drawn any baby birds yet, so I had to draw new birds for that. And so my list is really just what I have a backlog, whether it's people that are just, hey, you haven't drawn this bird yet. Can you draw this bird? I always do a holiday bird. So I've got a list of birds that I want to draw. And then as far as the books go, so I think I'll probably do a duck book next. I'll have to draw a bunch of ducks. Because who doesn't like ducks? Who doesn't like ducks? And they're pretty universal across many countries. Right, right. And um, I'm going to call it butts up birdies because, you know, when ducks eat, their little butts are in the air. And and that's the cutest part. (laughs) It's just so much fun. So it's strategic in terms of, okay, so I know I want to do that book, so I have to draw those ducks. But then also when I'm sitting down on a Saturday, I'll look at my list and go, what feels like a bird that is calling to my heart right now? It's really fun to hear about your creative process because we have crisis filers who are coming from all different professions listening to the show. And I would guess we have artists, but probably not as many as we have more of the traditional business people listening. So it really is neat to hear about the process. And tell us about how almost anything could become an idea for a bird. And maybe that could be some inspiration no matter what industry our listeners are in when they want to follow an idea to a next level. Yeah, and there's something about creating something that unlocks more creativity too. So a question I would ask everyone is, number one, what did you love as a kid that you could return to? And another is, 
What makes you feel the most free and the most creative? And even if it's gardening or pruning a tree or whatever that creative process is for someone, because it looks different for all of us, it just unlocks more. Because when I'm drawing a bird, maybe a half hour later, I'll have an idea for a client. And nothing is premeditated, but these things just pop open. It's like we're accessing different levels of our brain, our imagination, our creativity. But in order to do that, we have to find that play again, have that capacity and that space to dive deeper than just a checklist of things that has to get done. And I can really see it very logically, actually, the power of play when you can be free, when you can be in your flow, it unlocks the brain, it unlocks the heart. All these things are operating on all cylinders and then ideas flow for whatever area you're looking to have ideas flow. Yes. And I love that analogy. Like you just gave me that, like a faucet and the faucet gets turned off. And sometimes we don't even know the faucet is off, but you do something fun. You play, you play pickleball, you're with a friend, you're laughing. And all of a sudden you come back to your desk and it's like, oh my God gosh, all these ideas just came up. So sometimes we have to like unclog the drain or turn the faucet back on, whatever analogy you want to use. But that flow and creativity is, and play is a key to creativity. And then creativity is the key to that flow. I love that. And it makes me think about one of my joys is running. And when I'm running, there have been times I've actually in my head written intros to different episodes or the thought for an article or whatnot. But then the key is get it down on paper (laughs) so I don't forget. Right. So those are kind of those things. But I love it. Heather, so inspirational. First off, Give us your website so everyone listening can go meet the birds, get some books, get some other products you have on sale there. It's BuddhaBirdie.com, B-U-D-G-H-A-B-I-R-D-I-E.com. And then I'm on Instagram, same handle, Buddha Birdie. I've got all my drawings, information if anyone wants an author visit. My little shop is there, too, where you can buy the books. And I also do cards and prints and mugs. I mean, it's just amazing because there is so much. I just feel like we're in these early stages You've obviously given birth to these birds, so there are several that are adults, but we're in the early stages of watching where Buddha birdies can go. And I'd love to see, you've got two states down. I'd love to see you do a book for every state in the U.S. Yes. I mean, how fun would that be? So anyone listening that can help Heather fund that, it would be awesome. We really appreciate your inspiration today. Connect directly with Heather on Instagram at Buddha Birdie or, like she said, at her website. Today's crisis brief is brought to you by Huntington. Number one, go back to what brought you joy as a kid. Expand on that in your current life. Number two, when you play, you access creativity, which helps you access your flow state. Number three, What's your favorite activity, pastime, or creative endeavor? Give yourself permission to make it more a part of your life. Sometimes reaching your goals takes more than money. It takes know-how. That's why money's just the start of what Huntington can do. Get more than money from your bank. See how at Huntington.com slash get more. Rate, review, and subscribe to The Crisis Files on your platform of choice. Check out our website, thecrisisfiles.com, to catch up on all case files and to send us ideas for new ones. Follow us on YouTube and Instagram at The Crisis Files. I'm Roshini Rajkumar. Join me next time on The Crisis Files.